video I'm going to show you how you can create this like dynamic paths at first, that's jungle, depends what you want to make. But what I want to show you is this is what this render currently looks like. But say if I went in here, go to vertex and I select one of these vertices and I start moving, you can see the forest dynamically updates and that's what we're going to create. So therefore you can create different versions for everything. So if I click and drag this, pull this over this way and maybe grab this and pull this over this way and hit render. You can now see we get a completely different look. And um, I've also released a video just before this. And if I go into my materials, I go in here. I can also change the distance of this path. So we can go in here and I can select this to say to be two meters instead. And you can see the path updates and now this path is two meters across and that is wide. I showed how to do that in my other video. So if you want to see that, I'll put a link in the description so you can watch that video. So other than that, we're going to jump straight into this and I'm going to show you how you can create this dynamic path, this forest, so you can do it yourself. Okay, then let's start with the surface itself. So we have a spline here I've already set up and here it has four vertices and the same here I have four. The only difference is this is longer and this is half the weight of that. It doesn't really matter. You can make any spline you really want. I just keep it quite low poly at the moment now. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what is a reference. And what do I mean by that is when I duplicate this and I click OK, except I want to make sure I hit reference here. So when I click OK there, what that means is when I select this and I hit one, you can see as I move this, the other one moves with it. And that's what we're going to use to control our surface and our spline for the part as well. So they both work. What that means is I want to select this and I want to add on a sweep modifier. And the reason we put it on that one and not the other one, if I put a sweep on top of this, you see it does it on both because that's a reference of this one. So it's just going to duplicate it, which is something I don't want. What I want to do is select this, add a sweep modifier, and then I'm going to use custom shape. I'm going to use the shape I made down here. So pick and select this. And then we have our surface. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap this back to our center point. So then I can go into my layers, select the controller, go one. And as I move this, the surface is going to change and update. So if I move this up, you can see the surface is keeping up with that. Make sure your spline vertices are set to smooth. That way you'll get these extra subdivisions when it needs it. So now that we have that done, what we need to do now is add in the forest pro objects, the plants on the edge and set them up in such a way that they won't approach the edge. And as the edge moves, it will dynamically update back and forth. So let's do that now. So just for clarity, uh, I've set up this material. Again, it's my other video, video I've set this up. So if you want to see that, you can. And I've applied it to the material. And one thing you need to note is this material won't work unless it has geometry to work with. So in here, I have this spline controller. But what I need to do in this spline controller is once I select the spline, I need to go to rendering and go to enable in render and enable in viewport. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to rectangle and I'm going to make sure that the length doesn't have to be too much. The width that's penetrating true, but I'm going to set the width to zero. So then what we can do is we can still move this along just as the spline would. But now when I go to my material editor, I can make sure that this is selected again, just in case. And then I can hit render. And also what we need to do is in our layers, let's make sure that this is not renderable either. So spline controller, uncheck that. And just like that, we have our material working where we have this material in the middle and the other material on the edges. Just something to be aware of when you're working with this. So I've just created this box here because we're going to use this to populate our scene. We're not going to use plants or stones just yet, just so we can keep this streamlined and keep it smooth and running quickly. So first thing is get your forest per object, drag it on, make sure you're in icon mode, go into modify, go into geometry, and we're going to go plus, and we're going to click our box. So now that box is loaded in. So then we're going to go to surfaces. I'm going to go up here, click plus, and we're going to click our surface. Then I'm going to click auto so it updates as the surface updates. And then in areas, we're going to make sure that this surface area is on. So now we have the box populating our scene. I'm going to increase the density of this just a bit by decreasing 
this and there. So we have a bit more and we can see what's going on. Maybe even more. Let's go to 40. So we have to tell this object, oh, I don't want anything populating in the middle. That's where our path's going to be and say these are plants that I want around the edge. So how do we do that? Well, first things first, we need to go to our areas tab and then we need to go to our add here and we're going to add in the spline. Now that we've added, added in the spline, what we need to do is we need to tell this to be an exclude. So now it's excluded everything, but you can see here we have a thickness. So if I bring that to zero, everything goes back. I go to one meter, everything within one meter is being taken away. You can change this to two if you want. And again, we go out as far as two meters. But at the moment, it's quite a harsh line. So you can see it's just slice it straight away. So we can change that, make it a bit more subtle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change fall off density and scale. So if I start doing exclude and start dragging this up, you'll see bits start slowly fading off. Now they'll fade off from that thickness from two this way. So if we wanted to, we could do 1.5 and then they group a bit more, but you can see some of them are now poking out of it and it's not as tough and it's as strong as it was. So if I decrease this again, it's back to normal, but I start increasing this and more and more and more, they start depleting but they deplete a bit softer. You can go into your edit curve and say, make this a bit more gradual. So we can go something like this, so it's not as harsh. And again, these are just boxes, so it's kind of tough to see, but you can see it a bit easier, I think, in terms of what's happening overall. So again, we can go to the exclude and start pulling this up and down into still we're happy. Let's go about 1.5. So it pushes that out. And then same with the scale. So obviously, say if these were stones, we would have smaller stones here and gradually be larger as you go up. And also the planting might be smaller because cars going past and damaging. For whatever reason, you want to have the scale smaller and get bigger as it goes towards the middle. So again, we can start doing this exclude and you can see those are getting smaller and also larger as you get towards the edge. So that's kind of good to have. We could do about the similar at 1.5 and you can see those objects are going like this. Now you might get to a point where you obviously don't want it to get tiny, like where it looks ridiculous. So you can go into your edit curve and you can tell it, okay, so let's adjust some of these settings and say, well, I never want it to go to zero. So the absolute minimum is around 20%. And then you can even make it larger if you want. So you go, oh, actually someone even bigger than that, but it wouldn't make too much sense because it's, it's basically scaling just a certain section around here. So let's just keep that around 100. And that's as easy as that in terms of those areas. So like, let's say if we went back to the spline and I hit one and I start pushing and pulling, you see those are now updating as I push and pull that spline. The surface is following the spline because it's a reference and we can just dynamically update that. Now it's just a simple task of replacing and du duplicating this forest per object and just replacing it with plants. Okay, now let's set up stones along the edge of this path. So we can delete our box, we don't need that anymore. Go to our Forest Pro object. So let's go to our library and let's load in some stones. So Forest Pro has some presets that you're able to go to. So let's go to presets and stones. And uh, there might be actually a different pair of stones I can use, it might be in 3D. Yeah, in 3D stones. And we can just start choosing a few of these. They don't really matter. I'm just gonna pick randomly. And I'm gonna take load selected. And there we go, we have our stones in our scene. Now, this is after picking up the same settings that we had in the previous one, so this will work perfectly. We can change it a bit if we want. If we find that actually the thickness, we want this a bit closer, we can again pull this up and go something like this. And we can go to something like 0.9. So it gets a bit closer and we have those stones along the edge. Now, one other thing, one other thing with these stones is I might want to exclude it from this edge and I only want it here. So we have include here, and it might be counterintuitive to say that, but as you push this up, it'll push off those edge, and you just have it in the middle. We can also go to our distribution, and we can change this. We can bring this down and make it a bit more dense, or we can bring it up and make it less dense. Lastly, what we want to do is we want to go to transform. I want to make sure that we have some transform of these. So enable translation, rotation, and also scale. So we get a bit of variation in there. So now the next thing is let's add some plants. 
So I'm going to duplicate this, make sure to copy in an instance, and we're going to call this plants. And we'll call it, yeah, plants and small. Okay, and click OK, and let's find some planting that will work. So again, in the Forest Pro preset libraries, I'm just going to click one of these, maybe this one as well, and I'm going to click load selected. Once that, that is in, I want to obviously change a few things because they're right on top of each other. In areas, I want to switch off that in clue because I want it everywhere. And um, we probably want to increase the distribution a good bit. So in distribution, decrease this to something like 22 and we get a lot more. Again, if you want, you can change this as well. You can go to like patches and so you get a different type of look. And I think that would be good. Again, we're just showing how this works. We're not looking for, for perfection here. The last thing we want to do is now we want to add in plants that are quite large and not as dense. So let's duplicate that. And we go plants large. Click OK. And let's find a plant that looks well in this case. OK, and again with the presets, I'm just going to select one of these and maybe the lilac as well. And we're going to hit load selected. Now, obviously, this is way too much. So we need to go into distribution, change this, bring it up and up and up and up until we get way less. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to go into geometry, sorry, display, and we're going to change this to points cloud so we can see what's going on a bit better. So you can see the, this plant is way bigger than I thought it was. So what we can do is go into geometry, select, I think it might be lilac. I'm not sure though. Let me find out by, doing, by adjusting the scale. So go up and down. Yeah, there it is. So let's adjust this down a lot, something like 32%. And yeah, happy with that. Maybe let's increase that back up to like 40. So it matches the other one a bit better. And again, I'm going to go to distribution. I think that's a bit too much. And we're going to bring this up. So we get something along those lines. Now, last but not least, I'm going to add in a few trees. And that should be our first part, whatever you really want to call it done so again same thing duplicate and this time we're just going to call these trees click ok and we're going to go to our library again go to library and we're going to select one of these let's go for the silver maple and we're going to click load selected and again these are way too large so let's scale them down to about 40 percent and distribution we're going to go to and again bring this up so we only want a few so if you find that the width isn't enough and you want to make it wider, go back to our sweep or actually even if you go back to our path, if I can find it, go down to model or shape and we can grab, say, this. If you go with the spline, go in this and we can just make it a bit wider and you can see the forest dynamically updates as well from that. We can grab this edge, increase that and then we can go back to our forest and tell it, oh, let's go down here and tell it, okay, keep going a bit further from that path. And just like that, we have our scene. So let's see if it actually works. So let's select our spline, go to vertex, go here, and let's start moving it. And as you can see, it updates, and it's working perfectly. So we can even go up and down. Let's see if that works. Make sure it does. Absolutely perfect. So let's see what it looks like when I hit render. So now you can see we've hit render, and we have our scene. But this is the most basic part of the scene. We just have this flat area, this straight path. We, what happens if you want to change it? So I advise you to stop. I wouldn't do this as you're rendering. So hit stop. Here's our view. And let's grab our spline, go to vertex, and let's start moving things and make this a bit more interesting. So like the path going out there. Let's push it down so it slopes a bit. And then the path over here, we can push up. Maybe down a bit. Maybe goes over the horizon and then we can hit render again and just like that we have a totally different scene and yep there's our render we have the trees here it's updated we have the path coming along here we don't have anything in the way and another thing we can do is if we go to material like we did before i can go back to here i can change this down to one meter and then there you go we have this smaller softer path just here with the thing updating and again, you could do this over and over. You can then even go to the forest and change the trees. It's all updated. Or you can change the amount of these. You can have unlimited amount of views, different styles, different looks. You can get, if you think this plant's too purple or too heavy, you can replace it with something else or just get rid of it completely. Or you can add in leaves. It's really endless, this type of solution. So this is just how you can create this interactive updating landscape. Uh, I hope it's been helpful. 
it's a very quick little tip but uh, i think it's one that's quite valuable to know so yeah i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next video